This is the story of a black school kid who dreamt of a life that most would say was impossible. The dream proved to be so incredible that for 13 years of the 23-year-old's life, he has been signed to a Formula One team. When I first started watching Formula One, I think I was about five or six. And it was mainly because at the weekends, I spent uh, my weekends with my dad at my dad's house, and he was always watching the, the Grand Prix. So I sat with him and, and watched it. And uh, obviously, the, the two red and white McLarens were the, the cast to, to be in, and they were the most attractive. And, you know, they had the two best drivers, Alan Prost and Ayrton Senna, and uh, I always preferred or, or sort of took a, a keen liking to, to Ayrton. And over the years, I, um, I grew towards him. You know, he was a phenomenal driver, and it was a shame to see him go. And I was a bit disappointed that um, the year in 1995, when I won the championship and, and got the opportunity going, to go and meet Formula 1 drivers, it, uh, I was a year late. I missed out on it. In 2007, he became the youngest driver ever to pilot a Formula One car and to lead in the World Championship. Born in 1985, Lewis Carl Hamilton grew up in Stevenage, Hertfordshire in the UK and began his winning career at the age of seven, racing radio-controlled cars, before progressing to karts and then soon after to F3 and now F1. He is also the first black driver to ever compete in F1 and the first black driver to win a major race. He has been quoted as saying, being black is not a negative, it's a positive, if anything because I'm different. In the future it can open doors to different cultures and that is what motorsport is trying to do anyway. Outside of Formula One my heroes are foremost my father, then Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King. In mid-January 2008, Hamilton signed a new five-year multi-million pound contract to stay with McLaren Mercedes until at least the end of the 2012 season. He is now poised to reach heights never before attained in F1 by one so young. Confident and self-assured, hello everyone. Hamilton has never been shy of his ability. My dream would be to be uh, driving for McLaren. McLaren Mercedes and uh, sitting on the front row. With At age 10, he approached McLaren F1 team boss Ron Dennis and told him, Hi, I am Lewis Hamilton. I won the British Championship and one day I want to be racing your cars. Later, Dennis wrote in his book, Phone me in nine years. We'll sort something out then. Three years later, McLaren Mercedes signed Hamilton to their young driver support program and ultimately, 12 years after this initial encounter, he made his Formula One debut with the McLaren team. Hamilton's past rivals, present teammates and Formula One greats all agree that his is the career to watch. Hamilton has set numerous F1 rookie records and is the first black mixed race driver to compete in Formula One. After winning the British Formula Renault European Formula 3 and GP2 championship, he became a McLaren F1 driver for 2007. He has stated that he wants to stay in the McLaren team for the rest of his F1 career. Ever since I got into karting, there was always a danger there. And I think it was that, I guess you could call it the fear factor or whatever it is, um, you know, just knowing, knowing that you have that danger there is exciting. Some people don't like it, some people do. And that's something that spurs me on. Everything just seems to go silent. I'm basically just a normal guy from you know, from a small town to race for 13 years and finally get to Formula One, you know, and uh, to finally be there and just the whole world is very surreal. But yeah, you have to pinch yourself every now and then. In 1993, at the age of eight, Hamilton started karting at the Rye House Kart Circuit and quickly began winning races and championships. From the cadet ranks, he progressed through the Junior Yamaha and Junior Intercontinental A Divisions. In 1998, Dennis delivered on his promise and signed Hamilton to the McLaren Driver Development Programme. This contract included an option of a future F1 seat, making Hamilton the youngest ever driver to secure a contract, which later resulted in an F1 drive. Lewis Hamilton continued his progress into the 1999 Intercontinental A in 2000 Formula A and 2001 Formula Super A ranks and became European champion in 2000 with maximum points. 
Hamilton began his open-wheeler racing career in the 2001 British Formula Renault Winter Series and finished fifth. He did show speed at both the Macau and Korean Grand Prix. In Korea, he qualified on pole position in his first visit to the track and in only his fourth F3 race. At the beginning of 2004, Hamilton and McLaren had an argument, which resulted in McLaren temporarily dropping him. Hamilton eventually re-signed with McLaren and made his debut with Mana in the 2004 Formula 3 Euro Series. They won one race and Hamilton ended the year fifth in the championship. He also won the Bahrain F3 Super Prix and raced in the Macau F3 Grand Prix. After his success in Formula 3, he moved to ASM's sister GP2 team, ART Grand Prix, for 2006. Barely just the beginning, Hamilton's GP2 career was about to end. His dream of driving for McLaren in Formula 1 was about to come true. I'm living my dream. This is what I've been working for for 13 years. After months of speculation on whether Hamilton, Pedro de la Rosa, Gary Paffett or former world champion Mika Hakkinen would be paired with defending champion Fernando Alonso in 2007, Hamilton was confirmed as the team's second driver. He was told of McLaren's decision on September 30, 2006, but the news was not made public until November 24, for fear that it would be overshadowed by Michael Schumacher's retirement announcement. Already having been backed by McLaren for a decade, Hamilton showed dazzling speed and maturity beyond his years in winning at the first attempt the 2006 GP2 Championship, long considered a feeder series to Formula One. With Hamilton, the first Briton since Damon Hill was world champion in 1996, now lining up for F1, it was sure to be a major boost for the sport's popularity in a country that was home to a majority of the teams. Although he was hailed as Formula One's answer to Tiger Woods, Hamilton left it to others to comment about his skin colour. People say that uh, I, I'm possibly the Tiger Woods of Formula One, but I'm the Lewis Hamilton of Formula One. It's obviously a, an honour to be compared to, to Tiger Woods. Obviously, I look up to Tiger, and I'm actually getting into golf now, so I need some lessons off him. So, you know, if you're out there, if you're here any time, give me some because I need them. <laughs> McLaren's 2007 F1 season was kicked off when they presented their new drivers and car with a Spanish extravaganza designed to promote a youthful new image. Entertaining a crowd of more than 100,000 Valencians, Lewis Hamilton teamed up with the more experienced double world champion and former Renault pilot, Fernando Alonso. Being here, but also as a Formula 1 driver, it's so different to what I've, I'm used to. Before, I was, I was just a driver, but now, being a Vodafone McLaren Mercedes driver, it seems to change absolutely everything. And it's just an unreal feeling. Um, it's my dream come true, basically. We've worked very hard. It's been a long, long journey um, with my results in GP2 and in Formula 3 the previous year. Um, and some of the races that I had last year, hopefully that, sort of, that, that, that went towards convincing me that I was ready. Um, and with the experience that I have, I think I'm the right age. And I know Ron has a strong belief in me, so does Norbert. So, I mean, I hope that I don't let them down. The pair powered their F1 cars around a floodlit street circuit before artists from the world-renowned Cirque du Soleil performed on stage. In what might have been a moment of premeditation of things to come for the pair, fireworks lit up the night sky. With the first meeting due to start in Melbourne, Australia in just two months' time, the celebrations were soon over as the teams got down to the hard work of testing the new car. A few weeks later, although we hadn't yet hit the racetrack in an F1 car, Lewis Hamilton was driving in with the big players. At the February 2007 Laureus World Sports Awards, the attention should have been on Michael Schumacher and Fernando Alonso. But when the 22-year-old was nominated for the World Breakthrough of the Year category, the spotlight swung well and truly over to the modest Lewis Hamilton. And it has not moved from him yet. I've looked at the, the talent that I'm up against and uh, to be honest I'm amazed at the achievements that all of these athletes had, have accomplished. As the 2007 preseason testing got underway, the McLaren team was facing new challenges. 
McLaren had attracted a reputation for running fast times during testing and then failing on race day with unreliability. Add to this two new pilots and the coming year was bound to be eventful. Fernando Alonso's reputation and championship status was unquestionable, but he was new to McLaren. While rookie teammate Hamilton had shown pace in GP2, his F1 ability was an unknown quantity. Having not won a race in 2006, the stress at McLaren was no doubt mounting. A lot was riding on his new team. An opportunity had presented itself as this was the first season since 1991 that Ferrari was without the seemingly invincible Michael Schumacher. As the first race for the season got closer, former champion Damon Hill tipped Hamilton as the likely race winner, though Lewis was taking it all in his stride. I feel we really have a strong package this year, I feel very optimistic. And to be sitting next to Fernando Alonso, the two-time world champion, it really couldn't get better. So it's, there's just so much emotion going through me right now, but I have to control it. And uh, I've got a job to do this weekend. Ignoring the fact that the last driver to win a race in his rookie season was Colombian Juan Pablo Montoya with Williams in Italy 2001, the 22-year-old Briton was confident. I'm, I'm not here to, to finish 10th or something, I'm here to win, so I will apply myself. I have a lot, as I said, a steep learning curve. Um, there's extremely huge amounts to learn. And Hamilton had a strategy for the year just in case the flag should not be his. It would be nice to have a, a solid points finish in the first race, a sort of to set the foundation and sort of work from there towards podium and towards the win. Back at home in the UK, Lewis was sure he would have enough support on his Formula One debut. Yeah, I know my, my family are at home. Um, I know they're all gathering up at, uh, at my house and they'll be all watching it live early in the morning, I think. Um, so keep watching. Um, I, I miss you all and uh, hope you're all well. No doubt the Hamilton family was very proud, as Lewis had debuted his F1 career with a fourth in qualifying and had finished third in the race. And by April had created history by finishing on the podium in each of his first three races. After finishing second behind Philippe Massa in the Spanish Grand Prix, Hamilton took the lead in the Drivers' Championship. With this achievement, Lewis had surpassed Bruce McLaren's record to become the youngest driver to ever lead the World Championship. It wasn't long before speculation was mounting as to whether the new Formula One star had exceptional talent or was just driving an extremely fast car. He's a racer and there's a big difference in being a driver and a racer. In my whole career, and I did 525 races, I reckon I probably met two or three racers only. You know, there are other really good drivers. I mean, I don't want you to cry how good they are. They are terrific, but there aren't many racers. With 30 points to his credit for his consistency in taking a third and three second places, Hamilton was enthusiastic about the coming Monaco Grand Prix. I've been very fortunate to finish all four races on the podium. And from here, you just have to keep on working on that. And uh, I've had a second, I've had a third, and the next one has to be a win. But when that would happen, I don't know. I think Monaco is one of my strongest races. So I'm very strong on that track in the past. And uh, so I see no reason why we can't go there very strong and, and beat the Ferraris. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about scoring points. So if I can't win, then I'll score as many points as I can still. Many of the sport's greatest drivers retired without a victory in the Mediterranean Principality. But the McLaren drivers' first four races have been so impressive that few would be surprised if he celebrated a maiden win this weekend. Monaco definitely has to be my favourite circuit, mainly because you know you have no absolutely no room for error. You don't have runoff errors like on other circuits. You know, if you make a slight mistake, you're into the wall. So it's all about being on the limit, but just just on the limit and never over it. And the last two years I've been racing there in Formula Three and GP2. I've won all the races there. It is quite amazing when you're driving through the tunnel and knowing that uh, all the greats have driven through there in a Formula 1 car and now known this year I'm going to be driving there. It's just, uh, it's going to be unreal. It's going to be unreal. McLaren, who had the best record of any team in Monaco with 13 wins over the years compared to Ferrari's eight, were confident that they would rack up what would be their 150th win in Formula 1. One mistake over 78 laps on an often slippery ribbon of asphalt hemmed in by unforgiving barriers could be disastrous at Monaco and rookies were more likely to get it wrong than anyone. But Hamilton had barely put a wheel out of line so far. To be the quickest, you have to touch each barrier. And I think not many people notice that, but 
you almost have to touch every barrier and that's basically using every inch of the circuit and it's very very tough to do that you know you touch it too much you lose the wheel so it's all about just brushing the barrier each time then you know you've maximized the corner you've used absolutely every inch and uh, and you know it's going to be a good time Hamilton was two points ahead of his teammate, double world champion Fernando Alonso, and the Spaniard was determined to reassert himself after being beaten by the Briton in his last two races. I think going to Monaco, the most exciting part about driving in the Formula 1 car will be after the first corner, going up the hill at uh, 280 kilometres an hour, knowing that you're in a Formula 1 car, you've got the quick shift, the engine is you know, 19,000 RPM, and uh, also going through... Um, the swimming pool is extremely quick. You know, you come into there, I think it's 140 kilometers an hour, and you're almost flat out, bouncing off the curbs. In GP2, it was great, but I imagine in the Formula 1 car, it's going to be even, <laughs> even more hairy. Uh, and then coming into Raskas, the last corner, it's one of the most famous corners, I think, in all Formula 1 circuits. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always a challenge. And the result was a controversial finish for the McLaren team, and not what Hamilton had in mind. Taking a 1-2 on the podium, the celebrations might have seemed a bit subdued and the press were suggesting that Hamilton was prevented from racing his teammate. Following an FIA investigation, McLaren was cleared of any wrongdoing. Despite the big letdown, Lewis Hamilton continued to show that he was an ambitious young man with his feet firmly on the ground. Driving a Formula 1 car is a major challenge but uh, you know, separating your Formula 1 life to just a normal life it, it's quite difficult and I think at the moment just trying to keep everything the same as, as it's been for the last uh, all, all the past years you know try and keep it relaxed spend a lot of time with my family and friends and um, just trying to keep my feet on the ground and at the moment I'm doing well at it but it's obviously getting harder and harder the more and more successful you are the harder it gets and uh, but I hope hopefully because I have my family with me I should be okay. I just enjoy my job, you know. I get there and I just enjoy the whole experience with the, with the media, with the marketing appearances we have to do, and then driving the car is just the best thing ever. And uh, you know, I couldn't be happier doing anything else. And so I enjoy, as I enjoy that, I, you know, I don't really see what's going on around the world. I, when I'm away in North America, I don't see what's going on here. Um, but I've heard there's a lot of attention, and as you can see today, people shout my name. It's it's unreal. But um, you just have to take it in your stride and, and enjoy it. Bouncing back from the disappointment of Monaco, Hamilton scored his first pole positions and victories of his F1 career in Canada and at the US Grand Prix. Up until the French Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton had never been passed in a Formula 1 race. His third place finish moved him into a 14 point lead in the Drivers' Championship. Returning home in the lead up to the Silverstone Grand Prix in July, Britain's new F1 star revisited his roots and went karting. To come to my first Grand Prix in, in my home country and be leading the World Championship and in a British team, I mean, it couldn't be any better. And um, so this weekend, for sure, there's a lot of pressure on, but I've just got to try and do the best job I can, score as many points as I can, whether it's a win or not, I'd love to bring it home for my, for, for my country. Despite his McLaren team being accused of allegedly spying on rivals Ferrari, Lewis dismissed any wrongdoing or use of information on his vehicle. I think we're a very, very strong team. I mean, it's not something I've really focused on. Um, you know, you'd have to speak to the team about it. But I think, you know, we're a very, very strong team. It's not really anything that's involved. If you look at the car, it's, it's totally our car. There's nothing else on it. So, I mean, I'm really confident that we'll do a great job. He also says that a key lesson he learned from karting is never to give in when out on the track. One of the key lessons I've always learned is never to give up. If you look at a lot of my races, I've, I, you know, I've had bad races, but I've never given up. I keep pushing to the last, last lap. And even in Formula 1, you know, even if you're leading the race, you, I pushed till the last lap. Um, and it's just something inside of me, you know, I, I won't give up, I'll keep pushing. I think also, you know, just, you always got to be in control. And you got to listen to the people around you, the people that you trust. And keep those you trust uh, as close as possible, like your family. And I've been very, very fortunate to have a great family behind me, so. He took pole at his home Grand Prix at Silverstone and led for the first 16 laps. But slipped to third, 40 seconds behind Raikkonen and Alonso. When I said I was living my dream was getting into Formula One, and now um, you know I'm, I'm in Formula One and I'm I'm going way beyond my dreams. I'm, I finished on the podium for the first seven races and uh, leading the World Championship by ten points. I, I never imagined doing that, so it's definitely beyond my dreams. During qualifying for the European Grand Prix, Hamilton crashed at the Schumacher chicane after a problem with the wheel nut air gun used on his car. 
He was taken to the circuit's medical centre on a stretcher with an oxygen mask and drip, but was conscious throughout. After a final medical check on Sunday morning, Hamilton was cleared to race. During a heavy rainstorm which caused the race to be red flagged, Hamilton slid off into a gravel trap. However, as he kept his engine running, he was lifted back onto the circuit and able to rejoin the race after the restart. His ninth place finish in the race was his first non-podium and non-points finish, enabling the contenders Alonso and Massa to reduce Hamilton's championship lead. Within a week as the Hungarian Grand Prix was getting underway, McLaren were attempting to shield Hamilton and Alonso from the press as the spy controversy was gaining momentum. We uh, were going to push hard for sure this weekend. We, we came away from not such a good weekend. I need to come back. I feel very, very fresh. I feel optimistic, excited, just uh, happy to be here and, and still leading the World Championship, so I need to keep on pushing. It's going to be close, I think, all the way down to the last race, but um, I just got to, con as I said, try to do the same job as I've been doing the whole year. And, um, you know, last, last race was a one-off. It was one of those experiences you have to have. And I don't feel that this, week, this one's going to be as bad or I just feel it's going to be a positive weekend for us and I hope that continues for the rest of the season. Hamilton went on to win in Hungary and finished fifth in Turkey after a right front tyre puncture forced him to crawl back to the pits. His lead in the championship was cut once more. And the Italian press were soon reporting on the punishments imposed on the McLaren Formula One team by the FIA. Both sporting and daily Italian newspapers ran with the headlines on the McLaren decision. Formula One's governing body stripped the Mercedes-powered team of their 2007 Constructors' Championship points for having leaked Ferrari information in their possession, but allowed the Drivers' Championship to stand unchanged. The team was also fined 100 million US dollars, but the punishments, seen as harsh by some commentators, did not go far enough, according to the Italian newspapers. Meanwhile, Hamilton took fourth place in Belgium, and the war with Alonso continued as the Spaniard beat Hamilton in the Italian and Belgian Grand Prix, leaving the Briton with only a two-point lead in the title race. However, he extended his lead back to 12 points after winning the Japanese Grand Prix in heavy rain after Alonso crashed. Following the race, Hamilton was investigated by the race stewards over his involvement with an incident behind a safety car, which saw both Sebastian Vettel and Mark Webber crash out of the race while following the McLaren. After securing pole position in China, Hamilton retired from a race that saw changeable weather conditions. He experienced considerable tyre wear notably his right rear, and he ran wide into the gravel trap in the pit lane where his car beached. This was Hamilton's first retirement of his Formula One career. It was later revealed that Bridgestone became unnerved at the glaringly worn tyres and advised McLaren to order him to make a pit stop, which McLaren refused to do, believing it would be counterproductive. Hamilton himself couldn't tell the full extent of the tyre problem as raindrops were on his wing mirrors. But there was only heartbreak for Hamilton and his fans, as Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen turned the Formula One title battle into a three-way fight in the last race in Brazil, with victory in China after the championship leader, Hamilton, skidded out. Hamilton had hoped to become Formula One's first rookie champion. With one race to spare, the Britain's overall lead was trimmed to four points over a delighted Alonso. Well, absolute disappointment. I was, I was convinced that we were going to have a, a new legend as our world champion and a British world champion at that and long overdue. So, uh, like everybody else in Britain, I suppose, I'm feeling really disappointed. Well, I, I think sooner or later, everyone makes a mistake and Lewis has driven good all year. Um, so to make one mistake out of one season's racing, it's not bad going really, is it? As Hamilton was preparing for the final race of the season, three times world champion Jackie Stewart advised that it's not all about winning. What he has to do is finish the race, more than win it. He doesn't have to win the race and I think if that attitude had been taken in China, the previous Grand Prix, I think he would already be world champion. In the Brazilian Grand Prix, he failed to finish in a championship winning position finishing the race in 7th overall after being in 18th place at his worst point of the race. Despite Hamilton's public comments to the contrary, rumours of the rivalry with teammate Alonso had led to speculation that one of the pair would leave McLaren at the end of the 2007 season. 
Whether or not the rivalry was as bad as the rumours alleged didn't seem to matter when on November 2, 2007, Alonso and McLaren terminated their contract by mutual consent. The next day, Hamilton was contemplating the qualities of his yet unannounced teammate. Uh, we just, I need a teammate and, uh, you know, uh, I think we, we, we just need a, a team player. I, I hope whoever we have, we, we have another team player. A few days later, at the launch of the Lewis Hamilton My Story, a book chronicling the road to his stunning debut Grand Prix season, Hamilton said he would welcome whoever McLaren decided to sign as his Formula One teammate, but would also be working harder than ever to beat him. I'm going to be working as hard, if not harder, than I did this year and to, to make sure I stay ahead. He saw no reason why his teammate should not be another youngster. Well, I'm really not really, to be honest, bothered who I'm racing with. I really, really can't wait to get back in the car. Always look forward. Never look back. Always look forward and uh, focus on making the car better, to make myself better as a driver. And uh, I think we, we're going to have a good year, I hope. In recent years, F1 teams have become increasingly aware of the importance of keeping drivers in top physical and mental condition. Fitness and youth combine in a perfect formula to make Lewis Hamilton the most successful rookie driver ever to start a season. You always have to make a, a slight step in your, in your training, make training harder or training longer. And so going from Formula 3 to GB2 was quite a big step. And then making the, the step to Formula 1. You know, it's a big progression, and, and I had to have a personal trainer and physio to, to help me. Helping Hamilton to stay in good shape during a recent gym session at McLaren's headquarters in the UK was Australian fitness trainer Adam Contanzo. I provide massage with him, I make sure he's feeling well, that he hasn't got any aches and pains. With the demands of a Formula One car design requiring small, framed, lightweight drivers to actually fit in the cockpit. Improving a Formula One driver's muscular mass and endurance implies a very specific bodybuilding regime. It is then important to develop strength without increasing volume and weight too much. Some specific muscle groups need to be developed. One of the most important being the driver's neck. His neck strength, his lower back strength, his strength around his pelvis, that has really developed. There were, I believe, seven race circuits this year, at least seven, that uh, I'd never been to before. So now having the experience, going away from it, coming back the next year, knowing the circuit, knowing where the bumps are, knowing what the weather's usually like, what the grip surface is like, there's so much that I've learned. So I'll go there fully prepared. Uh, for the other circuits, it's great to have been there and experienced what the race, a Grand Prix race weekend is like, and what a race is, uh, what a, ra a Formula 1 race is like on that circuit. So I should be a little bit more prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vodafone McLaren Mercedes MP423 in the 2008 driver lineup. Lewis Hamilton, Heike Kaivalainen. On December 14, 2007, it was confirmed that Heike Kovalainen, who drove for Renault in 2007, would drive the second car for McLaren Mercedes for the 2008 Formula One season alongside Hamilton. It's a cool thing to come here. I'm 23 today, that's the new MP4 23, and we have the number 23. I don't know if I will be number 23, but um, the new car, it's, it obviously looks very similar to last year's car. It's an evolution of the car that we raced last year, and I'm extremely excited to, to drive it because I know what, you know, I haven't been in the car for some time now, and um, I'm like a kid with, with these toys taken away. I can't wait to get them back. Early in January 2008, the McLaren team began testing newly specced up cars in Spain. Hamilton joined the team's test driver Pedro de la Rosa and new teammate Kovalainen at the Jerez track to have his first experience of driving the McLaren MP4 23. It is a very, very exciting day for me because uh, obviously the first day of testing for me in 2008 and uh, to see the new car, how it's evolved, um, I'm very, very excited to get out there and, and just uh, take my time to build back up but just it's the beginning of the season this is where it all starts this is where we start to prepare the car. It was also his first official experience of driving in Formula One without traction control. The electronic aid is banned for the 2008 season. Hamilton said that the season really began with the first testing session and he was delighted to be back driving Formula One again. 
It reported no problems with the car, but the lack of traction control meant you had to be careful on the throttle or risk spinning the car. Uh, the biggest difference for us yeah, is, is no traction control, so it makes it a little bit trickier. I think it's a little bit more physical, and I think through the races this year it's going to be uh, quite tough because basically you have to modulate your, your right foot a little bit more, or quite a bit more than you did previously with, with traction control. But also looking after your rear tyres, I think there's going to be a lot of um, people perhaps spinning, and it, it's, it is very, very tricky, especially in the high speed corners when you, know, you get a little bit of wheel spin and you have to be very, very sharp perhaps a little bit more on the point than last year. Hamilton enthused about his new teammate, whose early career was also in cars. Yeah, I think it's great we have a, new, have a new teammate this year. It's been a good morning so far, I think beginning of the, uh, the testing for me and I've, I'm thoroughly enjoying it to be honest. Just getting back in the car and getting back, you know, just taking your time to slowly build yourself back up. Later in mid-January 2008, any disappointment the 23-year-old might have felt after losing by a single point was no doubt alleviated. Hamilton signed a new five-year multi-million pound contract to stay with McLaren Mercedes until at least the end of the 2012 season. Announcing that he had one aim for the 2008 season, that was to beat Kimi Raikkonen and become Formula One's youngest champion. He had astonished his fans and the racing fraternity when in 2007 he won four races in his debut season and with nine straight podium finishes, the year could so easily have ended with him becoming the first rookie champion. He believed the experience he gained last season would make him even more competitive. Going into Melbourne last year, I didn't know the circuit, so I know what to expect. And so I think I can get off to a sort of, I can hit the ground running a bit more than I did last year. For the sport's first black driver, the last 12 months had been a year of incredible change. Not only had he become a household name in Britain, along with his lucrative new deal with McLaren and relocation to Switzerland, Lewis Hamilton was proving that this young man was a force to be reckoned with. Later in February, it was time for Hamilton to join fellow sporting stars on the red carpet at the prestigious 2008 Laureus Award ceremony held in Russia. Lewis Hamilton took the Breakthrough of the Year award for his remarkable debut season in Formula One with McLaren. This year is really the year we need to push harder, so I'm more I'm fitter. Um, mentally, I feel stronger, and um, I feel I have the support of my family the, and the country behind me, so I'm looking forward to it. It wasn't long, and all 11 Formula One teams were back to the hard reality of testing and preparing for the coming season. Most observers agreed that Ferrari had shown the best pre-season form, with McLaren improving rapidly. Two times world champion Fernando Alonso, who had a turbulent time with McLaren in 2007, was now back at his old team Renault. Fans of Alonso suggested that Hamilton would not do as well as the last season without the help and inputs of Alonso at McLaren. However, Hamilton said he was full of confidence about the forthcoming 2008 season. I don't know whether that's because of what happened at the end of the season or, or what, but I guess just every year I get more and more determined, more and more confident in my abilities. And I feel so confident now that um, with what I learned last year that I can really produce something really good this year with, with the help of the team. So I feel great right now. After having qualified on pole position, Lewis won the first race of the 2008 season, the Australian Grand Prix. In the second race, the Malaysian Grand Prix, Hamilton finished fifth after long duels with both Mark Webber and Jarno Trulli. Back in the UK in May, Lewis took part in a promotional event in aid of Nelson Mandela's 46664 AIDS charity. AIDS is one of the most destructive epidemics in mankind and has killed over 25 million people so far. The hardest thing for me to believe is that every year worldwide over half a million people, children die from AIDS and this is something we really need to work hard to, to stop. Later in May for the Turkish Grand Prix, Lewis flew onto the set of a musical version of the Greek classic, Troy. After executing a clumsy three-point landing on the end of a wire, he became more relaxed when he engaged in some basic swordsmanship with the art director of the show. Hamilton said the real challenges were on the track. Istanbul is, the, I think, one of the two circuits that is actually anti-clockwise. So it's quite challenging for, the, for all the drivers, especially with turn eight, which I think 
you're talking about. Um, turn eight, we're pulling around four to five Gs for, I think it's around um, eight seconds. And if you're doing that every lap, it's very, very tough on the, on the left-hand side of the, the driver's neck, um, mainly because all the, uh, the other circuits we're using mostly the right side of your body. Um, so you have to make sure you're, you're prepared well for this, for this race, as, as well as down in Brazil. Hamilton finished in second on the Turkish Grand Prix on Sunday, May the 11th, 2008. He said that this was his best race he had ever competed in. I did the best job I could, I could do. I put 110% in. This time last year we had 10 points more, but at the end of the year, um, you know, it didn't go so well. So we're trying to, to optimise and make sure that we score as many points as we can throughout the year, but you have, you're going to have ups and downs, and uh, there's still a long, long way to go. So... Don't rule me out yet. The forecast rain for the 2008 Monaco Grand Prix was not going to dampen his enthusiasm for this glamour event. After all, he has called this his favourite race. Yeah, Monaco is the, the Grand Prix that every racing driver wants to win, especially me. I mean, for me, the Monaco Grand Prix is the, the most exciting race of the year, mm -hmm. and it's the race of the year to win. And uh, fortunately, I've had good runnings there. I came second there last year. But um, for sure this year, I want, to, uh, I want to make that one step up. And uh, it's just a dream for any kid to be sitting on, on the grid in Form 1 in their dream team, um, sitting on pole position and win a Grand Prix like fellow people that you know, Ant Senna have done in the past, Michael Schumacher has done in the past. And so, um, you know, it'd be a real pleasure to do it. With traction control systems banned and drivers needing to be inch perfect as they tread their cars around the tight and twisty circuit hemmed in by metal barriers, there is plenty of scope for mayhem in the wet. The McLaren driver who had set the fastest time in free practice session around the street circuit said that the extreme pressures on the driver on the narrow track meant that only the best succeed. There's no room for error. And now it's extremely difficult. You have to make sure that you're 100% focused, and there's no, there is no room for error. You know, the slightest mistake, and you're in the wall. And so, it really does mean that the, the the best drivers will rise to the top. It might not have been an easy drive, but when Hamilton championed his vehicle over the line for a winning place on the Monaco podium, he sure proved that he has the knack of making it look like it's just a drive in the park. Now leading in the world championship. Hamilton was all smiles as he attended a celebration to mark Nelson Mandela's 90th birthday. That championship lead wasn't to last long before the British Grand Prix Hamilton slipped back to fourth place in the championship with 38 points, 10 behind leader Felipe Massa. I think the next 10 races though, uh, as you could see last year, um, whether or not they went well or not, I was very strong. On the majority of those circuits, we've got a couple. We've got a new street circuit coming up as well. I, I really feel this next ten races, this second part of the season, is really where we put the hammer down and where we uh, we rise above the rest. Hamilton had failed to score points in his last two races. One after crashing in the pit lane in Canada, and the other after being penalised for missing a chicane in France. Despite this, Hamilton said the problems in the last two races were not affecting him. Not at all. I mean, for me, it's, it's all a part of the learning curve. You know, you have your ups and downs, and in life you're expected to have ups and downs. And if you don't, then you know, that's just not reality. This is, uh, this is motorsport, the pinnacle of motorsport, and for sure there's going to be some very tough times. I'm sure I haven't even met the toughest time in my life as yet. And, uh, but all of this is preparing me for it. And, um, but then there's going to be lots of highs, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Some had already written off Hamilton's chances of becoming champion in 2008. Rather than driving for reliability and save points, Hamilton said with a smile that his strategy for the rest of the season is simple. Well, I plan on winning as many races as possible for the rest of the season. I want to get more wins, that's what we all work for. And um, I really do believe we can do that. It's just every, you, you've got to be in the right place at the right time. Um, you've got to learn how to, um, to take a step back and realise, OK, you, know, you don't have to do anything, just drive the way you normally drive and you'll be fine, you'll get by. And uh, with a bit of luck, you know, we can pull together as a team and win this championship. And I, I feel better prepared than ever to, to, to challenge for the title. So even though it's very close, it makes it more exciting for, for me and for the whole team and for the, uh, for the world who's watching.
but um, you know, it's, it is a great season. After a convincing win in difficult wet conditions at Silverstone, Hamilton took the challenge of racing his McLaren Mercedes against a Learjet executive plane flying over Farnborough Airfield. In September, Hamilton's appeal to be reinstated as a Belgian Grand Prix winner was dismissed by the FIA. Subsequently, he had been demoted from first to third at Spa-Francorchamps in the September 7 race after cutting a chicane. Despite the failure of the appeal, Hamilton still led the World Championship at this stage by one point ahead of Felipe Massa. With Paris behind us, I think even going there, you know, we gave it our best shot and um, perhaps it wasn't the best result we had planned for, but uh, we move on. And that's all in the past now. We're really going to focus on the next few races and um, we can approach these races with the same confidence as we did the last few, simply because we've got a great package. We've done a great job to prepare the car. Um, I've got great confidence in my mechanics who do always a great job and the reliability is good. So then it's just down to me... Um, giving the right feedback, making sure I take the right steps over the weekend and giving the right feedback to push the car forward again. So um, I really feel confident in that sense. Hamilton may have been disappointed with the FIA's decision, but he preferred to concentrate on the first ever night Grand Prix in Singapore, which was set to pose a number of challenges. We always hope for a dry race, just because it's easier. <laughs> it's a lot easier in a, in a dry race because it's... Um, it's just a lot easier to keep the car on the track and push the car to the limit. But in the wet, it's all unknown, especially if you start pole. If you're the first one into the first corner, the first one to hit the, the big puddle. And all these different things are just unknown. But um, I, I think if we had a slower car in the dry, then perhaps we would ask for, I'll be praying for the rain. But the fact is we have a, a competitive car in both conditions. So regardless of if it's dry or wet, we're not bothered. We're just going to try win. Often, by the way. Well, I only know um, what I see at the circuit. You know, the team have done a lot of analysis, trying to find out as much as they can. And um, it's the same for me. I know I've come here, I've uh, read what the team know, the information they have, and I've walked the circuit um, during the day. I'm going to walk the circuit again, hopefully tonight. And um, and that just gives you kind of insight again. Just you walk in it slowly, it gives you good information. But when you get out there, it's going to be completely different. And um, I think the race is going to be very exciting. I think it's going to be more exciting than potentially some other races we've had um, this year. But um, I think just because it's a night race, it's going to be everyone's in, the, everyone's in the unknown. We don't know what to expect. Although not winning any of the following rounds, Hamilton went into the last race for the year at Brazil, still leading in the championship stakes ahead of Massa. The 23-year-old was set to become Formula One's youngest world champion if he could finish at least fifth in the race. While Hamilton was getting prepared for his greatest challenge to date, a young artist back in the UK managed to get his stamp of approval for an ambitious work of the would-be champion. Contemporary British artist Ian Cook was commissioned to create a work to celebrate Hamilton's fantastic racing season. His unique style of auto drawings involved dipping remote-controlled cars in paint and driving them across a canvas. Just over 5,000 miles away in Sao Paulo, Brazil, the project has provided some light-hearted respite for Formula One World Championship leader Lewis Hamilton. It's amazing how he's, he's using tyres and remote control cars and no paintbrush. He even has paint on his feet. Wow, that's really cool. The final painting measures 8 by 12 metres in size, covering 96 square metres. After many hours of back-breaking work, the image was finally unveiled in the shadow of Tower Bridge. Despite the pressure that was building as the race drew near, Hamilton reassured his fans that he was calmer and more confident than he was last season when he had lost the title, despite a wide advantage over Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen. I'm very relaxed. Uh, last year here, I came here with a seven-point lead, but I had a very bad race in China. And I looked at this race as if it, there was only one race left and it was I was nervous. I had the, the weight of the world on my shoulders and I, I didn't know how to deal with it. So it was 
Um, it was a very tough weekend, but this year is a much different approach. Hamilton's confidence left no doubt that he was one racing driver who aimed to come away from Brazil with a record-breaking championship. I, I plan to, to race exactly the same as I always do. Um, I grew up racing the way I do, and uh, that is what has got me to where I am today. So I don't believe that this weekend I need to change my approach or the way I drive. Um, it's a great feeling to come here with a seven-point lead and have that in your mind. But the fact is we, we can win. We have to work to win. Hamilton's friends and family had gathered in front of a giant screen at Silverstone for the decider in Brazil. The tension was mounting as Sebastian Vettel of Toro Rosso took fifth position away from Hamilton in the closing laps of the race. Then as the final lap approached, fans were on their feet, cheering as Hamilton, in a series of nail-biting manoeuvres, took back fifth place and crossed the line as the new world champion. Lewis deserved the championship. That's, that's what it comes down to. If you look over the whole year, he definitely did deserve the championship. It's a tremendous uh, result. He's, he's come out on top after not only his, nearly winning it in his first season, youngest ever Formula One world champion, Britain's new world, world champion, um, and first one for 12 years. He's put Britain back at the top, and uh, we're very, very proud of him. With his father by his side, the youngest ever world champion reflected on his dramatic achievement. Towards the end, it got extremely tough, and I'm sure, like all the audience, my heart was in my mouth, so uh, I just tried to do the best I could all the way to the end. Sort of seven to eight laps, I was praying. I was pacing and praying, and I, I, I missed like three or four of those laps. I didn't know where Lewis was at all. I was just hoping that things turned out correct. Back in the UK, Hamilton described the last few stressful laps. What an amazing experience. My heart was in my mouth just as, as everyone else's was. I, uh, I'd been at, in such a comfortable position pretty much for the whole, the whole race. I lost it with two laps to go and I couldn't get past this guy. I couldn't catch him. I just, my tyres were shot. I was coming to the last cor few corners and I didn't think I was going to get him. And, um, and then obviously I, I got past Glock. But I'd still, at that point, I didn't know if he was a back marker or what, so I was so much going on, there were so many people we were overtaking. And uh, what, I got to turn one, and that's when the people told me. The new world champion laughed off any bitterness that may have been directed towards him from his fellow drivers. Yeah. I just, you have to laugh it off, you have to, you, know, you can take note of it. And uh, I just leave it in the past, you know, the fact is, I beat those guys, I mean, I'm the world champion and uh, there's nothing they can do about it. I'll, uh, I'll keep pushing to be bigger and better and to, I hope that uh, the fans that I know that I have will continue to support me and um, you know, only they, they know who I am and what I stand for. And they know that I, you know, I go out there, I race, I race to be the best. Life is going to change, I dare say as a world champion, there may be a, a bit more call on Lewis this time, but we're going to try and uh, do what we always do, you know, as a family. I'm the same guy out of the car as I am in the car. When I'm in the car, I'm a fierce competitor, but I'm still me. And I think that always shines through. Dare I say, in, in all circumstances, uh, if you combine it all together, he is a worthy world champion. In less than two years, the Lewis Hamilton story has become a story of legend. Quite a, few years, so a, bit a young 23-year-old's dreams and hopes have turned into reality. A reality that has left his fans struggling to keep up with the aspirations and achievements that have been accrued by this confident lad from the quiet suburbs of Britain. His peers on the track have noticed this young chap, the first black driver to make it in Formula One and the youngest driver ever to take the World Championship. They have noticed mostly because they have all been beaten at one point or another in what is proving to be just the beginning of this racer's career? I think every race you, you put an answer to all the critics and I think everyone's questioning whether I've got too much pressure on me, whether the country's putting too much pressure on me. But yeah, the pressure I put on, under my, uh, on myself is way more than any, any other pressure outside. And uh, you know, that's, that's the pressure to, to succeed. And um, I think obviously in the last two races we've done better and better. Uh, we're the third and the second and uh, we just got to keep on moving up. Oh, it's fun every time. As soon as you put your suit on, it's fun. It's the whole weekend's a complete blast. And although it's very, very political and very serious and everything like that, 
which you need to be because it's a uh, it's immense it's, it's immensely uh, intense and competitive. But it's so much fun. You get in that car and I'm like a kid. I know what to do with it, um, and I'm like a kid with a new toy. For me as a driver, I just grew, I change. I, I I improve all the time through experiences, not race by race, not just race by race, but in life. You know, I'm always. I'm taking all these different experiences, positive or negative, extracting the best bits out of them, learning, becoming older and wiser. I mean, I'm 23 years old and I think I'm quite wise for my age, I think. I've still got a long way to go. But, um, but then when it comes to driving, I just, I, I excel. I, I push beyond the limits. When I'm training, I go beyond the pain barriers. I just do everything I can to make sure that when I arrive at the racetrack, um, I've already got two three tenths on the other guys.